across the APIs, inserting lists of objects using the Salesforce REST composite tree API. Welcome to another episode as we dive into the Salesforce APIs. In the last episode, we used the Salesforce REST API to insert a single account record and also to update a single account record. But there are many use cases where you need to be doing many inserts at the same time. So what we're gonna be moving to is the Salesforce Composite Tree API. It's a really powerful API that allows us to insert whole lists of accounts and even more, because it's called the Tree API, we can insert accounts and children all in one request. It's a really powerful API and we're gonna take a look at it. So looking at the Salesforce APIs, there's a whole number of APIs. Here's a, a chart I have showing that coming into the client application, we're first gonna authenticate, and then we're gonna hit one of the versioned web servers. And today we're looking at the composite tree API. And so we, we can insert a list of objects and its children. So we're going to services data, version number, hitting composite tree and the S object name. We put in reference numbers to the objects and we can then use those reference numbers between the, in, the future inserted objects. We're doing the post method with the bearer token authentication. So the first step is to authenticate. So I'm doing a post on the OAuth2 endpoint. Um, I have a body which has the grant type, client ID, client secret, username and password. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send. And now I have a brand new access token. So I can grab this access token and I'm gonna do, do the composite insert. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my header, put in the access token, and let's take a look at this command. So we're gonna have my URL, services data v59, composite tree, and then the name of the object you're inserting, account. Now in the payload, I have the JSON with records, now, what looks a little different is right here is a special annotation that I put in my JSON, and it's, good. it's a special attributes, and it says the type is account, and the reference ID is this little ref one. This is my reference number. So this could be Apple account, and this could be banana account. So these all have these two references. So you can see the JSON is just the JSON, the record sub element with a, a list. And I'm gonna be sending that to the composite tree and hit send. It's gonna tell me it has no errors. So it has errors as false. And it's gonna then give me the reference number I provided paired with the new Salesforce ID. So this allows me to take this it just any arbitrary reference numbers that I use and I can pair them. And now this has been created. Now let's take a look inside the org. So now you see I'm inside my Salesforce org. I'm gonna to go to all accounts, back to my accounts, all accounts. And I see I now have an Apple account that was just created. So it's just created right now using the user. So I was able to create an Apple account and a banana account in one API call. And you can see that just here was the structure, one API call, two records inserted. Now here is where it gets really fun, is we're gonna go and we're gonna have the same URL, composite tree account. We're gonna have the same records, the same attributes, we can add a few more fields, and I got this from the Salesforce help, but it's really helpful. Name, phone, website. But right here, it's using the reference ID to the um, relationship contacts. So on the contact object, I can be looking at the relationship. And there, I can pass in, so this is the relationship name contacts. I give it a sub-element of records, and now I, I am now inserting 
a reference type of contact with its own reference. And there's last name, first name. There's a second contact. So I'm inserting a parent and child all in one fell swoop. Contact, account, contacts. And the key is because it's using this relationship name, it's gonna attach the contacts to the appropriate parent automatically. And then I can, there is the second account. And you'll see that I'm gonna have account name, sem and let's give them some name. So this is gonna be Super Cycles and Super Cars. So we have Super Cycles and Super Cars, and it has a child account, a child account. And this is gonna be Sub Cars. So we have our creating a super cycles with two contacts, a super cars with two contacts, and a sub cars child account, and it has its own contact. So this is a parent two top level accounts, set of child contacts, and a sub account with it. So this is a really powerful tree here, all in a single transaction. And let's see if it works. Look at that. Oh, duplicate records, duplicate records. And so let's see, because I have the dupe checking is on. Let's alter this data a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the website. And we are ref two was a duplicate and ref three and ref six was a duplicate. So two. And so the email, let's actually, here we go, sample two, sample three, and we had ref six, sample four. And let's hit send. There we are. We had the duplicate checking at the contact level. We've now addressed it. And you'll see that we have all the success. So that showed us it really was a real command. And if we come in here, we're looking for, there we are, super cycles with the two contacts. And what we're gonna do is now go back and we have super cars with the one contact. And we're gonna go here and have sub cars here with the details and with a parent of supercars. So what we've done is let's go back to the postman. So if we look at this syntax, we have the ability to insert a parent list. It can have children lists and it can have related objects which are effectively children lists. And I, the references weren't even needed to link parent to children because I was using the actual contact. So it's a very effective technique. There's a limit of 200 records that you can insert. So you'll need to group these into 200 in the object graph that you're inserting. But it can be very powerful for inserting parent and children records. So when you have a challenge, which is to insert a number of records into Salesforce, you should be using the composite tree. And it, you should be looking at the parent and the children. You can be loading them in a single transaction. You can even specify whether all or none, whether you wanna load all of them and roll back and none, or let some of them succeed and some of them fail. This would be a great um, composite tree interface for where you have a lot of oncoming integrations where previously you were inserting an account and then inserting the contacts. Now you can bring them, bring them in all together. Very powerful tool in your tool belt. Hope you enjoy that. Thank you for joining as we insert the tree. Hope you have come back again, same bat time, same bat channel, and, join, and subscribe on Steve Tech Arc and stevetecharc.com and have a wonderful day.